David, you are a portrait photographer, but is there any particular reason for including people in your landscapes? Yeah, I like um, when I'm, when I'm travelling and, and photographing um, um, different areas around the world, I like to include people in my landscapes to tell the story, I guess, of the place. Um, travelling through Italy, and if you look at the picture behind me, it's, a, it's an interesting little scene of a village, but there's a man walking his dog just wandering through the village, which just adds, I guess, a little bit, a little bit of a storyline to um, that particular picture. Now, last year was quite busy for you. Could you fill us in on some of your highlights? Yeah, 2006 was a busy year for us. Um, I had four trips away. The first two trips were in this country. We went out to uh, Alice Springs and, and photographed the West McDonald's Ranges, um, Uluru and Katachuka. And the second trip was out to a, an Aboriginal settlement called Hearts Bluff, um, where I went out with a good friend of mine, Ken Duncan, and um, we, we spent a bit of time with an Aboriginal community photographing them, and, and they took us to photograph some of the most amazing places I've ever seen in my life in this country. Um, a lot of spots where we can't actually go to, we have to be invited along to uh, see these particular spots, so it was a privilege to, to be there. Um, and we obviously swapped, uh, swapped stories with them and taught them how to take photographs. So it was a learning experience for them and for us. Um, it was fascinating. And, and then I was commissioned to uh, do a job in Singapore and I tagged on a week and went up into Lijiang in China. I took my daughter Claire with me, it was her 21st, and um, we travelled up, um, up into the Him Himalayas. Um, which is where the Himalayas touched China and Lijiang was the, the town where we stayed and it was at the start of the um, Yangtze River which is a fascinating place and if ever you get the chance to see it you, you have to see it before it changes because um, there's so much change happening in China and um, it would be nice to capture it before it does all change I guess and that's one of the reasons I wanted to, uh, to go to Lijiang. And then I was commissioned by Mark and Darlene Czech from Mercy Ministries to go over to Rwanda and photograph um, the people of Rwanda and the countryside um, for a book called Hope Rwanda, A Hundred Days. And that was just fascinating. I got to photograph the people, the countryside, the landscape, and I learnt so much in that um, 14 days that I was there. I, I guess, you know, most people do know about genocide, well I learnt so much more. And being there and um, speaking to the people and hearing all the different stories sort of brought it home. It, um, it, was, it was very emotional, some of the stories we heard. It's still there very close to them because it only happened a decade ago, so it's going to be a long time before it, you know, they can move on. So they're still coming to grips with it all. And um, that's probably why the country is in such a mess, I guess. But when you looked at the children's faces, you didn't see that. You saw happy, smiling faces playing in the streets, having fun. And um, I was lucky enough to be able to capture that. And that was, I guess, was the positive side of, of Rwanda. So yeah, I um, got to photograph the gorillas, um, which was amazing. And um, up in the volcanoes on the border of the Congo and Uganda. But that was the probably most amazing uh, experience of the trip, I guess, was um, um, being as far away as I am from you to a silverback um, gorilla. Um, and I guess, that a bit dangerous? It, look, it, it wasn't. I was told by the guards that um, I was pretty safe. The gorillas are harmless. Um, we're not there on their food chain, luckily. Um, they eat nuts and roots and, um, and bamboo, so I felt pretty safe, but I was told that um, if a gorilla charges you, whatever you do, don't run. Um, you've just got to hold your ground and um, face up to them. And, um, did, did any charge you? Uh, one did, yeah, <laughs> one silverback. Um, he came down the hill and um, he charged me, because I've been there for about three quarters of an hour photographing his children and his wives, and he was just sitting up on the hill observing what I'd been doing. And um, I guess I've been there for about three quarters now with all the little gorillas running around and getting all those great little pictures, and he decided I've been there long enough. So he came running down the hill, and he beat his chest, and he said, well, he didn't say, he just sort of pushed me, and said it was time to go. And um, so I, I um, immediately turned around, took a few pictures of him, and. And, and left because I thought, well, I've been there long enough and I'm, I'm lucky enough to, 
to have got these great pictures, so it was time to go. And I was told that could happen. In other words, he was saying, yeah, you've been in my village long enough. You won an award with a photo from Rwanda. Could you give us some of the background behind that shot? Yes, I was very lucky just recently to win a major award with this little picture. And, and it was just taken in front of um, a shop um, in um, a village in Kigali. Um, I was there just buying some Cokes, I guess, for, for the people that um, I'd been photographing. I, I bought a crate of Cokes and just offered people a, a drink. Rather than a handout, they don't want money, um, that, but they do like you buying things from them, which was, which was really good. So wherever I went in, in Rwanda, I, I tried to buy things. And even if it was in the fruit markets, I'd buy fruit or veggies. And even if I didn't use them, at least I'd be giving them something without actually giving them money to take pictures you know, which I think would be disrespectful. But um, the reason this picture came about was because I'd been to this little shop and I was photographing the shopkeeper and this lady came walking past and I said, oh, would you like a Coke? And I gave her a Coke and um, then I got this particular shot. But I, I guess it sums up the, the life in, in Rwanda, the little boy there with his um, water bottle. Um, that is their life. They, they have to collect their water from the creeks. There's no running water, there's no power, there's no gas. So it, it is very difficult. It's hard for us to, to understand the way they live. And hopefully this, this particular shot will be the cover for the book, Hope Rwanda, 100 Days. What photographic tips would you give to a budding traveller? Well, I, I guess I'm a film photographer. I shoot film and um, I don't shoot too much digital. But in this digital day and age, most people who are travelling are shooting digital. And I guess one of the tips is to obviously take as many pictures as you can and maybe take as, memory, as many memory cards as you can with you because you don't really want to be editing and working with laptops while you're overseas. So fill up the cards and bring them back and then do that when you're sitting in, at home in front of your computer. I think a lot of people um, make the mistake of doing their editing while they're taking their pictures while they're travelling. And I've heard horrific stories about people editing all the pictures they've taken by pressing the wrong button. So in, in, the, in, the, in the spur of the moment, you can make mistakes because you might be looking for um, some extra memory. So I would say just take as many memory cards as you can and shoot JPEG, which gives you maybe three or 400 shots per memory card. And then you can play with them when you get back. But look, as long as the exposure is right on the back and you're looking at that screen and you think you've got your exposures right, then everything should be fine. David, thank you for being on Travel TV show today. Oh, thanks for having me. It's been a pleasure. Thank you.